Hi, it's Carolyn here. Before you start listening to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently in Switzerland doing my very own and long overdue trip around the country. I'm visiting some of the most popular destinations in Switzerland, as well as a number of lesser known places. And I'm traveling around by both car and train. If you'd like to follow along with my Swiss travels to see where I am and what I'm doing, make sure you follow Holidays to Switzerland on Instagram. That's Holidays number two Switzerland. Here I'll be sharing photos and reels as I go, and I'd love you to follow along. Now, settle back and enjoy this episode. Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host, Carolyn Schonefinger, chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course, some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Grüezi, and welcome to episode 47. I'm your host, Carolyn. Have you ever found yourself in a city and wondered how to make the most of your day? Perhaps you'd like to get a deeper insight into the city itself from a local, or maybe you'd like to explore further afield, but you don't want the hassle of trying to navigate public transport. And if you're a solo traveller, perhaps you'd like some company for the day. That's how I was feeling on a visit to Zurich many years ago. I had a day to myself between the events I was attending and I really wanted to visit the Appenzell region, an idyllic area of Switzerland that's a little off the regular tourist trail. The solution was to join a day tour and I found myself aboard a Best of Switzerland Tours mini coach for what turned out to be an absolutely fantastic day. Our friendly and knowledgeable driver guide chauffeured myself and my fellow passengers around for the day so we could indulge in chocolate and cheese and visit the beautiful town of Appenzell. It was the perfect hassle-free day out. Best of Switzerland Tours is still going strong today. In fact, they offer an even wider variety of tours than when I was a passenger, including some premium small group tours that give their customers the chance to meet and support local artisans. To tell us about how the company has evolved over the years and to share some details of the wonderful tours they offer, I'm joined today by Best of Switzerland Tours CEO Christian Landis and Operations Manager Amanda Zerbrook. If you need to go on a tour, you need Switzerland. Before we hear from Christian and Amanda, I'd like to say thanks to the team at Switzerland Tourism for sponsoring the podcast. On their website, myswitzerland.com, you'll find loads of information and inspiration to help you plan the perfect Swiss vacation. Good morning, Christian and Amanda. Thank you very much for coming onto the podcast. I'm looking forward to hearing all about Best of Switzerland Tours. Thank you, Caroline, for having us in your show. It's a great honour for us to be here uh, talking with you about our company. (laughs) We'll start with you, Christian. Um, Can you tell our listeners a bit about Best of Switzerland Tours? Yes, of course. Um, well, Best of Switzerland Tours was founded in the year 2000. Uh, I joined the company about 13 years ago. Uh, by then, it was still a rather small company. Um, we were about three uh, office uh, employees uh, out in the field. We had probably 15 guides and welcomed in a whole year about 20,000 guests. Um mm-hmm. Together with the owner, we implemented new structures and improved uh, the manual process, uh, eliminated redundancy, enhanced the communication between the team on the field and the back office. Um, So quite a lot of changes in in that early days for me. 
And uh, as of that first day when I started, uh, I, I decided to, that the main focus should be uh, to increase the overall quality. Um, so to, to aim not only showing the best places in Switzerland, but uh, also giving our, our visitors the best uh, the, the very best experience by doing uh, uh, visiting these places that I think was crucial for our our grow uh, later on that we had this very clear focus. With the time, we also implemented more and more technology, uh, so we were able to eliminate manual work and uh, also mistakes. And with this time we gained, uh, we were able to spend into a better customer service, uh, of course. And so all these uh, changes, these, the, to change all these processes was, processes was not uh, an easy thing. Um, it needed good preparation, uh, testing, teaching of the team uh, prior, in, in, prior the implementation of the changes was very important. Uh, so uh, I think the the focus was also a lot on communication together with the team. Mm -hmm. We spent many many hours with brainstorming uh, with different team members from different uh, fields um, to check where we were able to to improve the service and to improve uh, the processes. Uh, we still do uh, quite a lot of team building activities, especially in the winter months, our low season. And we, with this, we try to motivate everybody to be part of, of this journey we are, we are going on. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. And you're based in Zurich. Um, so, or, well, I, I guess most of your tours are, are from Zurich, although I think you might do a few out of Lucerne as well. Is that right? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, well, the company is, is based a little outside of Zurich, but our tours start in, in the city centre behind the Zurich main train station. And 99% of the tours start there. We do have just one excursion which starts in Lucerne exclusively. Um, all the other tours are starting in Zurich and many of them head through Lucerne to the destinations. Um, so there is, a, for most of the tours, a possibility to join the tours uh, either from Zurich or Lucerne. And those okay. who are running to Bernese Oberlan, they also uh, could join the, the tour out of Interlock. Okay. Oh, we have okay. mainly these three three departure options. Right. Okay. Excellent. Um, now, you've mentioned there that since you joined the company, there's been quite a lot of changes. Um, but as the CEO, what are you most proud of um, the company sort of achieving in, in the last few years? That's a, a difficult one because it is always a... And not only me who do, who 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 does a lot; it's always the team behind. So I I think uh, it is very nice to see a company growing, uh, to treat it like a plant and see how it grows and flourish. Uh, but uh, it, the the important thing are the actions behind and uh, building a trust and a long term partnership with our supplier and industry partner was a, a strong focus, and this is something. I think we can now rely on uh, that. That's that's a, a part where I would say I'm I'm proud of. But uh, probably the most important part is really the spirit we have in our company, a supportive communication, um, and and the, the the team in 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 first place uh, to motivate everybody, giving their maximum for our guests and customers having good times together, celebrate achievements, uh, but also doing the things right. The aim is not only the grow and profit, but uh, having a, a good financial reserve, being able to get through a crisis like we had the last <laughs> couple of uh, two, two years, um, paying fair wages to everybody, investing in sustainability. So, all this together, I think, is is, is where, where we stand today. And this is what makes me proud uh, to see uh, yeah, th these, these things uh, that, that I, I feel that we do the things together and not, not uh, just uh, yeah, one, one person, but all, all together. Yeah, and yeah, great. Yeah, these achievements. And I, I'm, sh 
I'm sure that motivation amongst the the whole team um, that shines through when they're dealing with with the customers too, and and that um, obviously gives the customers a, a wonderful experience. Yeah, that goes all hand in hand. I think uh, you, you cannot yeah. mention one single point. It's the, the the whole thing together, which on the end uh, probably is shown then on the quality of the of the experience. Yeah, great. Um, now I'm going to ask Amanda in a moment to tell us about some of the uh, wonderful tours that you offer. But um, in your opinion, Christian, who are best of Switzerland tours um, most suitable for? Well, I would say our offers are for pretty much everybody. Um, we we do have uh, a lot of world explorers traveling as solo or in a couple with friends. Uh, we love welcoming families, uh, taking their children to different parts of the world, teaching different culture. But also we have a lot of uh, so-called golden ages, the retired but still active traveler. Um, Switzerland, as everybody knows, is an expensive country. And by offering uh, high quality tours in groups, we are able to offer a great price value and the possibility to visit these fantastic places at an affordable price. So, yeah, I would say it's, it's not limited mm-hmm. to a certain uh, target group, but really for everybody. Mm-hmm. Something for everyone, yeah. Okay, so let's hear about some of those tours. Um, Amanda, you're the operations manager, so um, you're obviously very familiar with all, all the different tours that the company offers. Um, so let's start with the day tours. Uh, what are some of the most popular day tours that you offer? Also from my side, Caroline, thank you very much for having us. I do hope I can answer all the questions to the best of my knowledge. And so as we already mentioned, we do have a lot of sightseeing tours that depart from our official meeting points in Zurich, Lucerne and Interlaken. And we can sort of um, roughly divide them into different geographical areas of Switzerland, of the German speaking part. So if we would take the greater Zurich area, we would have Zurich and its surroundings, um, central Switzerland and the Bernese Oberland. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to pick one or two out of each region to give our listeners an idea of what we have on the palette for them. So maybe we can start right off with our most popular city tours of Zurich, because this is where most of our guests start their tours, and it's the gateway to the Alps. Mm -hmm. And one tour that we have is our Zurich and surroundings city tour. Um, It starts with a classic city tour of Zurich with a photo stop at the lakeside, a drive through the university district and the Zurich Berg um, area. We do include a guided walk of the old town because this is not accessible by bus. And then we continue with a drive along the shores of Lake Zurich and cross it by ferry. And then the highlight of the tour Mm -hmm. is a cable car ride up to the Felsenegg viewpoint with great views over the city, the lake, and in the backside, some yeah, beautiful mountain peaks that we can get a glance of that hopefully inspire guests to venture a little bit further the next day after this tour. Mm-hmm. Now, a second tour that is very popular with our guests is our Zurich with Cruise and Lindholm of Chocolate Tour. And this tour sort of mm-hmm. combines a classic city tour with a cruise on Lake Zurich that brings us to the famous Lindholm of Chocolate a real paradise for all chocolate lovers out there. (laughs) Um, You can learn all about chocolate making on an audio guided walk through the museum, um, buy some souvenirs at the Lindt store, pose for a selfie with the world famous chocolate fountain maybe, or treat yourself to some delicious ice cream or waffles at the Lindt Cafe. And what is also very special about this tour is that and the tour guide will introduce you to our public transport system and teach you how to navigate the city like a local. So you will be provided okay. with a 24 hour ticket valid for public transport and you will return by tram and trolley bus to the city centre. And then with your ticket, you will still be able to explore the city on public transport yeah. even after okay. your tour has ended. So I think that's a great start of getting yeah, into Zurich and value. knowing what there is to see and maybe do some individual mm-hmm. explorations just after the tour and and then yeah, yeah maybe we can go a little bit further outside of the city so if you let's say have half day to spend we do have both a morning and an afternoon tour to the Rhineforce Europe's biggest okay. waterfall okay 
Um, it's very popular for people either arriving in the morning and wanting to do a tour in the afternoon or vice versa, um, having one last half day to spare before they return to the airport to fly out of Zurich. Um, on both of the tours, we visit the Rhine Falls. In summer, there's even the possibility to take an optional boat ride in the basin. And I would say it's mainly the afternoon excursion that is particularly popular because there we also include a visit of the medieval village of Stein am Rhein. Oh, lovely. So a nice combination of nature and yeah, old historic um, houses where we have a guided walk through. Yeah. yeah. And that's a very popular village with um, with international Absolutely. tourists. Absolutely, and I think we all know the reason why. <laughs> yes, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, so this will be more about like the greater Zurich area. Now if we jump maybe to our full-day mountain excursions, I'm sure no visit mm-hmm. of Switzerland is complete without visiting one of our mountains. And um, we do offer Definitely different not. tours to central Switzerland, like the second area that we cater to. Um, in summer, I would say it's mostly Pilatus that is very popular. There we offer the so-called golden round trip. And what makes it very special is that you can combine various means of public transport within one day. So from Zurich or Lucerne later on, um, you would take the coach to Lucerne and then continue to Krienz. Then you ascend the mountain by different cable cars that bring you to the summit where you can go for a hike, enjoy the views, have a nice Swiss lunch in the restaurant. And then you would descend by the world's steepest cogwheel train and return to Lucerne by boat. So within the span of just nine and a half hours from Zurich or yeah, a little shorter from Lucerne, you really get to see the best of Swiss public transport. Mm, taste of everything. Yeah, absolutely. And then in winter, or let's say the whole year through, a second destination that is very popular in central Switzerland would be Mount Tiglis, um, especially since it's covered in ice and snow all year round. So if you do travel to Switzerland in summer, but you still want to get this first touch of snow, and then Tiglis would probably be the one to go to. Um, here you would ascend by cable cars, um, including the revolving Rotair cable car that you've may have heard mm-hmm. of. And then, yeah, there are different summit attractions to explore, such as the highest suspension bridge of Europe, um, a glacier cave, an ice fly, a chairlift, you name it. So it's definitely going to be great fun for the whole family. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I can see why children would, uh, would love that tour. <laughs> absolutely. And then maybe we jump into the last destination that we are heading to with our tours, which would be the Bernese Oberland. There, the highlight of any Swiss trip will probably be the visit to the Jungfrau Joch, top of Europe, um, Europe's highest train station. We do ascend with the new cable car that is called Eigel Express that was inaugurated just here last year. And then you have time on the summit to explore the different um, attractions before we then descend by Cockwheel train to the Lauterbrunnen Valley and return to the respective um, destination. So that's the... Okay. The passengers on that get a get a taste of both uh, types of transport to the Jungfrau Jock as well, which is great. Absolutely, yeah. Wonderful. Now, it's not only the sightseeing tours that you offer. You also offer quite a few other different types of um, activities on your tours. So could you tell us about some of those? Oh, absolutely. So as Christian mentioned before, our sightseeing tours, they're really suitable for everyone. And then for guests seeking a bit more of a thrill, we also offer a small but very interesting selection of more active tours. And so... Since most of the time spent on these tours is spent outdoors and they're only available seasonally. But in summer, we would Mm -hmm. take adventurous guests whitewater rafting or canyoning in the Bernese Overland. And certainly nothing for the faint hearted, but great fun if you are into this sort of experience. And then also very popular with families and couples alike is our adventure package for Mount Fierce. And there you have a cable car ride and different adventure activities included, such as zip lining, um, a ride with a mountain cart, you name it. So, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely something for those looking for some more adventure. And then in winter, our guests can try skiing 
um, for the first time in their life, either on Mount Tiglis or then in the heart of the Bernese Oberland in Grindelwald. Mm, okay, so all, all year round there's something that they can do and, and be getting out, outdoors and appreciating the, the beauty of Switzerland. Absolutely, yes. I, I just would like to maybe step in and mention that these uh, more active tours where uh, probably a, an outdoor guide is required, we do not uh, have our own guide, but we work with uh, a partner company who provides uh, or is specialized in this in these activities. So it, it's not because mm-hmm. we are really doing more the sightseeing part of us and the guidance. And then for, for these rafting or, or ski uh, teachers, we need the instructors, the, 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 yeah, the, the professional ones. And we work then with the partner company doing those activities. Yeah, good. So that that's um, a, a good point about about the guides that you offer. So you mentioned earlier on that um, when you first joined the company, uh, or when the company first started, there was something like thirteen guides. How many do you have now, and how how do you um, sort of choose them? Mm-hmm. Um, well, we probably it's a bit difficult to say after the crisis who is still around and who not. We we don't sure, have a. Yeah. Uh, a model where we contract them on a fixed uh, base, um, like like uh, 80% or five days a week or something. Um, we have a very flexible uh, working model for the guides, um, uh, which makes uh, that they can work as much as they really like, um, uh, but not more. So uh, the idea is that each day when they get up, uh, to 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 guide a tour that they are very motivated and looking forward, no matter if it's raining or uh, hot outside mm-hmm. or whatever. So they are really looking forward to provide a a great experience. Um, that also is the reason why we have plenty of guides. Um, we have probably about eighty at the moment, eighty tour guides. Um, oh, wow. Working some of them twice a week, some once a week, maybe some three times a week in high season in summer, but not as a full time job. They all have mm-hmm. their other jobs or are retired or mothers or teacher for a part time job, whatever, uh, guides from many different fields. Um, that also makes it very interesting, I think, because each guide has a different personality, talks about probably a bit of different mm-hmm. topic, of course, covering the main important uh, topics, but uh, with, a, with a unique focus. And um, yeah, so about, about 80 tour guides um, working, working for us in, in summer, I would say, uh, and obviously, um, as you said, because they're, they're doing it because they enjoy it. So it's obviously something they're passionate about, sharing their their knowledge of a particular area with, with visitors. So that's, um, yeah, that would actually make it even better than just having someone who's there because it's their job and they've got to show up five, five days a yeah, week that, to definitely. do it. So these, I, these guides would be yeah, passionate. That, that's why the reason why we have this kind of model, because it's not for the company itself, it's much more complicated uh, to plan the shifts and mm-hmm. uh, having always uh, making sure. sure that we have enough guides. And um, you also asked about how they are chosen. So the, many people have this passion about showing the beauty of Switzerland. Uh, they talk different languages. All of our guides have at least two languages. English is mandatory. Uh, of course, most of them speak uh, German as they uh, are from, from Switzerland. But most of them also speak Spanish. We have a few uh, guides who speak Mandarin um, for, for the Chinese visitors. But um, so, so this is one important part the language, the communication skills in, in general, of course, um, the passion for this job. But then we are show we, we show them, we teach them during the winter time. Uh, we, we offer like a course for the guide. Um, uh, having different uh, models and uh, on, on the end of, in spring um, they they are certified by by the company uh, to be a tour guide for our our tours and then they usually do that for many years they don't learn all the tours in the first uh, couple of weeks but they go step by step uh, learning more more tours uh, some of them are probably having one year until they have all the tours. They know all the tours. Others 
they they take a little more time and but this makes that uh, it is interesting for them they can always learn something more uh, widen their uh, portfolio and uh, yeah staying with the company for many years usually yeah yeah that's great so as well as those uh, day tours you you have some multi-day tours so I'd like to hear more about those and obviously then um, that gives the guides another aspect too that um, there's not only just the uh, day or half day tour some some of the guides get to go overnight with the guests that is not quite true, unfortunately, oh, for the tour guide. But let me tell you a little bit more how these overnight tours work to get an idea. Okay, thank you. So we do have a selection of multi-day tours that combine our most popular mountain excursions to one package. So there are two different kinds of travelers, I would say, that are looking for these multi-day tours. On the one hand side, we have guests that want to a hassle-free way of combining yeah, the highlights of Switzerland in a very limited number of days that they have while they are here. So for example, with a top of Switzerland package, they could visit Mount Pilatus, Mount Titlis and Jungfrau Joch in just three days without having to worry about transportation, overnight accommodation. And how this works is that it's unfortunately not fully guided in the sense that the tour guide stays overnight and has a room next to them where they can knock on the door if they have anything <laughs> they want to know at the middle of the night. And But they do join these different day tours. And it's also nice because one day you have this guide and the next one, maybe someone from a different um, walk of life, you get to know many more details than just staying with someone for the three days. Um, sure. But mm-hmm. So for example, here with this package, the guests will join our Pilatus tour from Zurich and ascend the mountain with the tour guide. Um, but then they will check in at the hotel and spend the evening on Pilatus when all the day visitors have gone. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, really enjoy the serenity up there, sleep under a starry sky if the weather yeah, plays along. And then the second day, they would make their way down to Lucerne again where they then meet the second group that they join for Mount Tickley. So they will be with a new guide for that day Mm -hmm. um, and return to Lucerne in the evening, stay overnight there. And then on the third day, they would meet yet another tour guide for the last day of their excursion and make their way to Jungfrau Joch and then return back to Zurich um, in the evening. So that's very popular, let's say, if you've booked a cruise and you just have an extension of Mm -hmm. three days that you want to book, and you don't want to pick out all the hotels and um, tours yourself. Yeah, a couple of clicks and then you have the whole package there right at your yeah. hand. <laughs> and yeah, that's great. Just maybe about the second type of um, multi-day tour that we have. So we also have a lot of guests that think that one day at the destination is simply not enough to get sort of a feeling for it. And they would like to extend their stay. So there we also offer some combinations where you can, for example, visit Mount Rigi in two days and sort of make it into a wellness retreat, staying at a hotel with a mineral baths and spa. So there is either the opportunity to combine different tours in a very limited amount of days, or you can say, hey, I really want to get a sense for the destination and spend the night there to see what it's like when all the tourists have left for the day. Yeah, that's that's perfect. So on on your um, the, on the day tours, what um, what sort of number of passengers, um, or what's the maximum number of passengers that that you take? That's a bit of a tricky question. I believe that's probably the same everywhere. And the truth is that our group sizes vary greatly depending on the season that you're traveling, the day of the week, and sometimes even the weather or other factors. But I would say that usually we do operate uh, city tours or half day tours with a travel coach. And then for mm-hmm. the mountain excursions, it's either a travel coach or sometimes also a double decker that we use. But we do offer some small group tours that I believe we will talk about in just a moment for those yes. guests that are looking for a smaller group that they would like to travel with. Yeah, so okay. a, a travel coach means a, a roughly between 40 and 50 uh, mm-hmm. guests. A double decker is up to 80 guests, but when we do use a, a double decker uh, for the transport, we like in 99% of the cases, we do have two tour guides on the bus. So then the group is also split again into a more, uh, yeah, uh, uh, 
a smaller smaller amount of uh, group. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, good. All right. So could you tell us about these uh, the small group tours, Amanda? Yes, sure. If I remember correctly, Caroline, you actually participated in one of them some years I ago. Did. Is that correct? I yeah. did, yes. It's actually 10 years ago now, so wow. it seems like, seems like a lifetime ago. But, yeah, it was a wonderful tour. And um, I was very lucky that I think on that tour, I think there was only six or eight guests. It, it was off. It was sort of um, beginning of May, so it wasn't wasn't the peak season. Um, and yeah, I met some some lovely fellow travellers. I was by myself, and mm-hmm. yeah, it was it was a great day out. Perfect. So, as the name suggests, the most obvious difference to our sightseeing tour is, of course, the number of participants that join. So we do operate with a um, sprinter that holds a maximum of sixteen guests. So you were lucky that it was only eight, but I think even with 16, it's a very personal experience. You mm-hmm. kind of get to know the other people that are on tour. But of course, there's also much more to it than just the number of participants, right? So if you were sure. to join us again today or sometime in the future, you would, of course, still find yourself traveling to the same beautiful destination. Um, but we have carefully redesigned these small group tours over the yeah, last two years, I would say, to make them a true premium experience. And our aim was to include as many authentic local providers as possible. So we wanted to support local businesses and give back to the destination that we present our guests to. And this reflects, of course, on the itinerary of the tour. So for example, if we take our mountains, cheese and chocolate tour to the Appenzell region, um, we would, for example, visit a local farm to see how they produce the fresh milk that then is later on turned into the Swiss cheese um, at the show dairy. So you do get to see yeah, a, a Swiss farm. I know that many people will say, you know, we have farms in our country as well. It's not <laughs> that much of a big deal. But I do believe that, yeah, it's very special to see our traditions and how they are still kept alive. Um, on a day-to-day basis with a lot of effort mm. from the local communities. Yeah. And then we would continue to a local mountain, Hoer Kasten, um, with beautiful views over four countries. So you see all the way to Germany, Austria, the municipality of Liechtenstein and Switzerland. And then in the end, when we are back in the village of Appenzell, we take our guests on a guided stroll through the pedestrian area with lots of wooden painted houses and what we do there is that we visit a lot of local specialty stores so we would drop into a bakery that produces local biberly and then Mm -hmm. of course the highlight of the tour for many of our guests hence is also in the title would be a visit to a boutique chocolate manufacturer where the maître chocolatier takes the time to personally introduce us to the art of artisan chocolate making so I think a fantastic experience that you would definitely miss when you were traveling in a bigger group. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Also, the farm you mentioned. I mean, this is a is a Swiss farm, a typical Swiss farm, but uh, those are small farms compared to probably most uh, other farms around the world. Uh, he has uh, about thirty uh, cat, cattle. You say thirty cows. Mm-hmm. Cows. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's a. Uh, uh, they produce some vegetables, but it's it's really a small uh, farm, and uh, so, so you can go into the stable and and see the the cows there if they are inside a stable, or mm-hmm. probably they are out on the field, and you can see them in their uh, yeah nature. Yeah. yeah, and who who can resist a Swiss cow? <laughs> it's a, a perfect uh, selfie. Uh, yeah, for exactly. A selfie. <laughs> Exactly. And so um, that's that's the tour, to, uh, the small group tour to Up and Sell. Where else do you have small group tours? We have two more. One of them is heading to Bern, the Swiss capital. So there we visit the Cumbly Experience, which is a premium biscuit factory, very well known in Switzerland and beyond the borders, and where we get to taste some of these biscuits. And we continue to the actual capital city, um, the tour guide will take our guests on a guided stroll um, visiting the different monuments such as the Zietglocke, which is a very famous clock tower or the parliament building. And then we would yeah, have time for a lunch break before we head out to another cheese dairy 
um, that we will visit to learn all about the Swiss cheese. So this would be the one to burn. And then the last mm -hmm. and shortest one would be a Zurich Sunset Tour. And this is a city tour that we operate as a small group tour. And here we would go to Felsenegg, the same viewpoint that we've mentioned before in one of the tours, and to have a lovely four-course dinner, including a traditional Swiss cheese fondue, so you can bond with other travelers over a melting pot of cheese. It's very popular, <laughs> especially in summer, but also cozy in winter. Yeah, great. I love how all those small group tours, they've all got a real food thing in there that <laughs> sounds ideal. Absolutely. Now, you've obviously met um, many, many travellers over the years. Have you got any particularly memorable experiences that you'd like to share with us? Oh, I'm sure our guides could uh, write a book about this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we do have uh, quite frequently some marriage proposal, uh, especially mm -hmm. on the tour going to Jungfrau Joch, top of Europe. Okay. I think that is a very special place to propose marriage. <laughs> um, we welcome influencer or uh, some in their country, famous actors or singers or politicians. Um, but I would say world famous stars probably wouldn't join a group tour as, mm -hmm. our, uh, as our tours. Um, so I think on our tours, the great thing is that everybody is treated equally and there is no difference between a bit more rich or middle class traveler. Everybody sits in the same coach, gets the same stunning landscape and hears to the same stories of our tour guides. Um, but we do have uh, clients coming for a second or a third times on our tours. Most of, of, of our visitors are uh, first time visitors and they are really coming for a holiday of their lifetime they may have dreamed about um, for a long time. Dreaming about standing the first time on the snow or experience the biggest waterfall in Europe. Um, and, and finally, their, their dreams come true by, by taking uh, uh, our tours. Uh, I remember well uh, the story of our, one of our guides of an old Indian couple standing on the terrace of Mount Titi, being afraid of stepping onto the snow. Our guide took them by hand to the ice flyer, a chairlift, and rode with them to the bottom where they could do a small uh, snowball fight. Uh, they really had tears in their eyes. And uh, I think these are the moments when our guides know why they love being a tour guide. Yeah, absolutely. Just cha changed someone's life, or created a, a memory that they'll, they'll never forget. Can you uh, both tell me what is your favourite? If you had to pick one tour to go to a destination that you just love, which <laughs> one would you choose? Oh, sorry, I know I'm putting you on the spot there. <laughs> Well, I think the good thing is that regardless of which tour you pick, you can never go wrong. Like any well, mountain yeah. that you choose, you will be happy and having the day of your life. But personally, I would say for me, it's probably Mount Pilatus in summer, just because of the different modes of transportation that I think are just unique in this world. I don't think there's many other tours where you get to experience that in just a single day. Or then as a chocolate lover, I also really... Yeah, admire the tour to the Lindholm of chocolate. I think you cannot go wrong with that one either. Okay, great. Yeah, I would join you on both, but uh, <laughs> um, when I that, that think of, of be being a, a tourist in my own country and I haven't been to Jungfraujoch, top of Europe, I would definitely say this is such a unique experience. Uh, you, you, it, it's a real must do. Um, it, it's like out of this world. So it's like going into the Antarctica, um, uh, a place you, you cannot easily access. And, and uh, what they build up there to experience that on, on, on this altitude is really something, something incredible. Um, but yeah, I, I also love our small group tours. The one you, you said to up and sail, uh, I think that is also something I definitely would would join um, to experience uh, the country in a bit a different way and probably not that world famous spot. Mm -hmm. um, being a bit off the beaten track is also something I I like to do. 
Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us today. I'll include some links in the show notes to where um, our listeners can find out more about all your tours. Um, And you've certainly given them plenty of options. So no doubt there'll be lots of people rushing (laughs) off to to book on the Best of Switzerland tours and um, letting you and the tour guides um, show them the country. We're looking forward to welcome them. And I I hope that they don't join just one tour, but they have enough time to come on several and experience (laughs) different aspects. Absolutely. Yeah. As uh, Amanda mentioned before, I did do a tour 10 years ago and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I can highly recommend them. And and I know anyone joining will will have a wonderful day out or or days out as it as it may be. Invitation (laughs) stands for your next visit. We hope it won't be too long. Time to come back. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I will. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Caroline. Thank you for having us. As you can see, Best of Switzerland Tours offer a tour for everyone. Whether you'd like a sightseeing tour of Zurich, want to head to the mountains or try an adventure activity, or enjoy a more personalised experience on one of their small group tours, there really is something to suit every type of traveller. Joining a tour really does take the hassle out of your sightseeing experience. And having a guide at hand allows you to get a deeper knowledge of your destination. And there are bound to be a few insider's tips too. Why not include a tour in your upcoming trip? You can find the details about all the tours mentioned in today's episode in the show notes, as well as some great photos from Best of Switzerland Tours and links to where you can book one of their tours. Those show notes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 47. Thanks so much for joining me today. Until next time, tschüss. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website, holidaystoswitzerland.com, sign up for our monthly newsletter, or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.